Shock suspense stories. Carry and death. My lips are parched and swollen and cracked. My tongue is dry and my ser and searches my mouth for moisture, but finds none. I lie at the burning hot sand, staring up at the cloudless sky. The glaring sun bakes down, and my eyes smart. They do not tear, for I have had no water for four days. I lie on the steaming desert badlands, and I watch the buzzards circling lazily, screaming and soaring, swooping hungrily. And I wait. Come on, you lousy vultures! Come down here and feast! Come down here and set me free! Hey. I try to remember how it all began. How I came to be lying here in the middle of nowhere, waiting for the carrion birds to drop down and sink their razor sharp talons into my flesh, flesh and tear and rip and free me from the jaws of death. I see it now the ribbon of concrete stretching across the desert, swooping beneath my speeding car wheels. He's gated on me. I'll never make it. Beside me on the car seat, $30,000 rested in a black satchel. $30,000 dollars for which I held a, a bank and bread and a god ahead. Easy living and women and fancy clothes waited, smiling, beckoning. But right behind me, closing the gap between us, his siren wailing came the state trooper. You'll never get me, copper! I'll kill you first! I pressed the accelerator to the floorboards, urging my car ahead. I could see the trooper in the rear mirror, hurtling after me, taking careful aim. Just a little, just a little. And then I slammed my foot on the brakes. The tires squid along the concrete, marking a double back line of burned rubber. I waited for the impact of the trooper and his motorcycle mashing into the rear of my car. Sucker! With the sound of metal crashing against metal and the dull thud of flesh and bones splitting against steel never came. My car swam skidding onto the gravel shoulder of the road and everything started whirling crazily as it spun over. Ah! I felt myself leave the seat, thrown forward, the steering wheel crushing against my chest. Then I was flying upward, my head striking the car roof. As the blackness closed in, I could hear the shattering of glass and the roar of the trooper's bike as it shot. I slipped into a world of darkness and heat, and when I opened my eyes, the car was a mass of flames and I was outside, lying beside the motorcycle. The trooper was speaking to someone. Yeah, I got him. He's out cold. Wrapped up his car, but I pulled him out before it caught fire. He was kneeling beside me, mic in hand. I felt a cold reed of steel around my waist. I was handcuffed to the trooper, and he was reporting it on his two-way radio. Come out and get us. I'll wait for you here. That's right. 16 miles south on Route 209. I was caught, terror clawed at my racing heart. The trooper wasn't looking at me. He still thought I was out cold. It was my only chance. I recognize this car by the description. The money's been burned. Yeah. Okay. See you in a few minutes. Oh, by the way, bring the master cuff key. I haven't got mine. I yanked hard and he lost his balance. He toppled over me and my free hand found his neck. His cry of surprise gurgled in his throat as my fingers closed around it. Hey! I rode over on top of him, straddling him. His free hand went for his gun and I kicked. It clattered across the concrete onto the gravel. Shoulder. His eyes bulged and his face turned red, then purple. And I held on. And then his body went limp and I knew I'd strangled him. I started going through his pockets, looking for the key to the handcuffs. Where is it? Damn it! Where's the key? No key. I guess I got a little hysterical. I ripped at his clothes, cursing. Fuck! I dragged him to the motorcycle and started to rifle through the side packs when I remember what he said. Oh, by the way, bring the master cuff key. I haven't got my- Good lord! I was handcuffed to a corpse, and in a few moments more cops would be there. I looked around widely, far down the long and straight road, a small speck appeared on the horizon. I got to get out of here! I picked up the dead trooper and threw him across my shoulders. To try to use the motorcycle was out of the question. My one chance lay in making for the Badlands. 
I started to run. I kept running until my heart felt like something was trying to pile their way out of my chest. My throat felt like a steel band was wrapped around it, and my legs felt like rubber. Gotta make it to the rocks before they get there and see what happened. I kept going. The body I carried felt as if though it weighed 500 pounds. My legs were numb. My clothes were soaked in perspiration. Finally, I reached the rugged, rocky section I'd headed for. <sighs> I, I, I got a, a knife in my pocket. It's the only way I got to get uh, free of him. I lay behind a rock beside the trooper's body, sucking in the hot desert air and searching my pockets for my knife. But my pockets were empty. The dirty... He must have cleaned me out while I was unconscious. And then, far back across the burning sand, back at the road, I can hear the car squealing to a stop. They'll get me for sure. I haven't got enough of a lead. I, I, I could see them getting out of their car, looking around at the smoldering wreck, the park bike. They're not state troopers. One of them's a woman. It was the break I needed. I'd caught my breath, so I hoisted the body to my shoulders again and started off. Doctors come fast in the badlands. The shadows from the mountains off to the west drop down on you like a gray blanket. And the stars are suddenly twinkling overhead. I didn't sleep that first night. I kept going, carrying that corpse, stumbling in the blackness, getting up and moving on. They'll never track me now. This is a real rocky country, and they can't use bloodhounds. They'd have nothing to give the hounds to smell my car burn. Finally, towards morning, I collapsed from exhaustion. I lay beside the corpse, licking my lips and tasting the salty sweat. And suddenly, I wanted a drink. I wanted a drink in the worst way. And I knew if I didn't do something fast, I'd die of a thirst out there. I got to get free of this damn body somehow. The sun came up in all its blazing fury and baked down on the rocks in the sand. I pulled and tugged, trying to wrench the cups from the corpse, now growing rigid with rigor mortis. It's no use. I've got to cut myself away. And then his gleaming badge caught the sun's reflection and sent it streaming into my eyes. I giggled, <laughs> ripping it from his uniform. Form. Of course, his badge. I was just shoving it on this rock. Once when I was a kid, I went down to the stockyards to a slaughterhouse and watched them slaughter a lamb and skin it. It made me sick as the shopping badge slit the white flesh, revealing the red slimy muscles and tendons. I got sick again, just like that time so long ago. <clears throat> the badge dropped from my hand, clattered to the rocky ground, and skidded down into a crevice. When I was finished emptying my guts of the last drop of liquid left in them, I realized what had happened. My one chance! God! I can't reach it! And then, they were overhead. The buzzards. They soared and circled, scarcely moving their wings. Their hungry screams echoed from rock to rock. So many more. Good Lord! It started, I started to run, dragging the body, falling, getting up. But they stayed above me, circling, circling. Their screeches laughing at me. Oh Lord, what will I do? What will I do? I kept going until I couldn't go on any further. My wrist bled when the handcuffs had torn the flesh. My lips were dry. Everything started spinning. I slipped to the ground, and as the blackness closed in, the screams seemed to come out of the hot air down toward me. When I came to, I was shivering from the cold. It was night again. Beside me, the corpse lay rigid, and black shadows crouched upon it. I screamed. Ah! The buzzers took up the course. Their wings began beating up into the blackness. They circled above me, frightened off by my cry. They... They were feeding on him! I wretched, but there was nothing in me to heave. I lay back, shivering and perspiring, listening to the screams and the flapping of huge wings. They'll come back if I go to sleep. I, I, I can't let them come back. Uh, I got to stay away. The night crawled by and dawn came. And once more the sun leaped into the cloudless sky and burned down upon me. The stench of the partially eaten body I was handcuffed to seared my dust-filled dry nostrils. If I could find a cabin, a, a prospector's or a miner's with a knife. I lifted the partially eaten body and staggered on, searching, listening. But the only sounds I heard were the cries of the carrion birds overhead. By nightfall, 
My lips were cracked and my tongue was swollen, and I perspired no longer. If I die, if I don't get free of him, I'll die! I was weak and dizzy, and I had to fight to keep awake, to keep those horrible creatures away. And then, I thought of my own chance, my own desperate chance to save myself. The buzzards, they could save me! They don't eat live flesh, only dead! They could free me! And as dawn of the fourth day broke, I lay on the hot burning sand, staring up at the cloudless sky, watching the buzzards circling lazily, screaming and soaring, swooping hungrily, and I waited. Come on, you lousy vultures! Come down here and feast! Come down here and set me free! The glaring sun bakes down, and my eyes smart, but they do not hear. And I've had no water for four days. I wait, I wait and watch, and then one of them dropped towards me. I do not move, I do not dare, I do not want to scare them off again. I close my eyes, listening to the beating of wings as the others come down. I listen to them tearing and squealing and fight among themselves as they gorge upon the dead flesh. And I wait, I wait and listen to the tearing and pulling and screeching and soft bunching. And then I look, oh my lord! The course beside me is practically stripped clean, but I feel no nausea, I feel no revulsion, not even when I see the hulking shadow on my own chest, tearing and ripping and squealing. No! No! And I feel no pain as the vice-like jaws of the raw-necked vultures close upon my flesh and peel it from my bones. I, I, I cannot move. I cannot stop them. I can only watch in silent horror as they feed upon me. I can watch only until one of them plucks my eyeballs from my skull. For I am dead. The end.